Here's why Rick and Morty's The Vat of Acid episode is an instant classic. When it was announced way back in 2019 that Rick and Morty's long-awaited fourth season was going to be split into two parts, fans reacted calmly and rationally, accepting this news with grace and aplomb. Just kidding, they weren't on board at all, and for many it felt like getting new episodes of their favorite show was just some kind of sick joke. But given how everything has shaken out since then, well, maybe everybody should be thankful for that split because it's giving us fresh new content right now. The final five episodes of season four have been dissecting and examining what makes this show tick. The latest episode, the Vat of Acid episode, really taps into what drew audiences to the show in the first place. Rick is at his best when he uses his massive mind to make the multiverse a worse place, generally so he can satisfy his ego. Honestly, this episode goes so fully hilariously dark that it catapults it to instant classic status. So, what happened in the Vat of Acid episode anyway? Well, spoilers from here on out, so Matt, would you be so kind? Wait, wait, what? Thank you very much. Now, the episode begins simply enough. Rick and Morty are on their way to make a deal with some alien mobsters. Rick promises nothing will go wrong, but if they do, he has a contingency plan. To jump into a vat of fake acid that's full of bones to make it look like the duo died. Of course, things immediately go wrong when the gangsters double-cross Rick and Morty, leading our heroes to take refuge in that aforementioned vat of fake acid. But after some unexpected introspection prompted by seeing a grandfather and grandson jump to their doom and then skepticism over the acid, Morty decides he isn't into waiting it out when he can just shoot his way out of this problem. Which, look, I get it, not everybody likes bottle episodes. Morty tears into Rick by telling him a vat of fake acid is a bad idea, which Rick takes offense to because there are no bad ideas, just bad implementations. Furthermore, Morty wonders why Rick never listens to Morty's ideas, like the one he has for a video game style save button for real life that lets you reload reality if things go wrong. Oh my god, here we go. It's a good idea, Rick! And even though there's a box clearly labeled time travel stuff in Rick's lab, Rick says he doesn't do time travel but he decides to take a break from working on his version of the Death Sphere from Phantasm to make this device after some negging, <clears throat> I mean reverse psychology, from Morty. So are you gonna- Yes, I'm gonna f do it! Morty uses this TV remote-esque device to experience life with no consequences, doing everything from pantsing his teacher in front of the class, to getting a redo on talking to his crush Jessica, to getting unlimited ice cream samples, to reloading his video game without actually having to reload his video game. Eventually, Morty indulges his dark side by committing suicide by cop and running over strangers in a car with a dude named Heroin Keith. I don't pay for your friendship, Heroin Keith! Damn! In the middle of this montage, something unexpected happens. Morty forms a real connection with a mystery woman and falls in love with her. In this new relationship, he doesn't have to reset a single thing. And then things get real, like alive real, like the 1993 survival drama based on the 1974 biography of the same name about an Uruguayan rugby team crashed in the Andes Mountains who then had to eat their teammates remains real. Yeah, that real. While flying to visit the Northern Lights, Morty is in a plane crash in which he loses his save button. But alive isn't the only reference in this scene if you'll pay attention. The characters here are dressed eerily like South Park characters, and Morty is basically cosplaying as Kenny, which of course doesn't bode well. Both Morty and his girlfriend are forced to cannibalize other passengers to survive. Finally, Morty makes a dangerous trek into the wild to find the button. But he doesn't reset when he does. He doesn't give up what he's found with the love of his life. Instead, he uses his extremely frostbitten fingers to call 911. The two are ultimately rescued, but then the other shoe drops when Jerry pulls a massive Jerry and mistakes the save point button for a TV remote for setting things to moments before Morty meets his dream girl. In classic gamer fashion, Morty absolutely beefs it with the girl after the reset and accidentally saves while getting pepper sprayed, which he then relives repeatedly. And from there, things go from sad to worse. Rick explains to Morty that it wasn't actually a time travel reset button because, again, Rick doesn't do time travel. What the device actually did was kill a Morty in a different universe and have our Morty take his place. Everything Morty did actually happened somewhere. So Morty killed a bunch of versions of himself in addition to all the other horrible things he did, or as Rick puts it, It's the prestige. You prestige Rick, yourself. Rick, how many did I you kill? You tell me, Morty. Rick then merges all those horrible realities into one, which means there are a lot of groups that are pissed off at the surviving Morty. And the only way out of it is... God damn it. ...by hiding in a vat of fake acid. That's right, Rick did all of this as a giant I told you so which is why the episode is so dark. Rick was willing to destroy countless lives and universes just to get back at Morty for not liking his acid vat idea. 
and this profound level of pettiness immediately cemented this episode as a fan favorite, proving that the show finds its groove when Rick revels in his truly terrible nature. And it's not just the fans who loved this episode, the minds behind it did as well. In a behind-the-scenes interview for the episode, series co-creator Dan Harmon said that he was proud of this episode. And co-creator slash voice of Rick and Morty Justin Roiland took to Twitter so he could say the Vat of Acid episode was his favorite of this batch. And this is all to say nothing of the countless Easter eggs and deep cut references sprinkled throughout the episode. There are more Easter eggs here than there are bones in a rat, which is to say, a lot. On the cartoon front, we got a shout out to Futurama both verbally and spiritually, as well as Bugs Bunny being named the alleged inventor of reverse psychology. We also see what's clearly Moe's Tavern from The Simpsons when Morty pushes the old man across slash into the street. Plus, there's that aforementioned South Park reference when Morty and co crash land in the mountains. When Rick is building the save point device, we can see he has a vial labeled TGRI, which looks suspiciously like the ooze container from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. And, as I mentioned earlier, he's also seen building the Death Sphere from Phantasm as well. When Rick is showing Morty all the realities that Morty reset, we also get a callback to the Season 3 episode Morty's Mind Blowers, which Morty apparently revisited during his off-screen adventures. This episode was easily the best of the season, but the question that we have now is, with two episodes to go, can they top it? We'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, tell me, what do you folks think? What was your favorite reset in the episode? Were there any other Easter eggs that we missed? And which has been your favorite episode of Rick and Morty Season 4 so far? Let's discuss! Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, why not give us a like and subscribe? And if you want to get notified every time we go live with a new show or drop a new video, hit that little bell down below. That way you're going to be up to date on all the latest theories, news, and rumors in the pop culture world. In the meantime, stay safe, be healthy, and have a great day. Bye-bye.